All right, welcome to another Creative TD training video. Um, in this next video, we're going to pick up where we left off in the last shader writing video. Uh, and in this video, we are going to learn how to add in properties um, so that we have uh, tweakables over here, basically, inside the in inspector for this particular material that will allow us to do things like add textures and uh, tint color, um, and add normal maps and specular, all those kinds of things. But in this particular video, we are going to go over the process of adding those properties and how it works inside of a shader uh, so that they start to give you the ability to modify the look of your actual shader. So this is basically step two of writing a, a basic shader, a surface shader inside of Unity. So to get started, we're going to go back to our um, code that we started over here. So if we actually remove all of this here for a second. Nope, oh, this is the wrong one. Wait one second. Let me get the other one open here. All right, there's our other one. Okay, so this is where we left off in the last video. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to declare a new block. Now this, this block is going to exist outside of the subshader, right? This is the meat of your actual um, surface shader right here. Um, Unity needs to have the properties block on the outside of that subshader block, right? So to start this out, you want to write out the word properties and it will turn green if you're using uh, mono develop. And then you want opening and closing brackets. And that now basically gives you the, abil the ability, excuse me, to add properties to the inspector for this particular shader. All right. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're gonna, going to give it an internal name, so like a, a, a variable name. All right, and I'm, going, I'm just going to call this my color tint. All right, so that's this name right here that we're de defining is the name that's going to be used inside of the shader to reference it. Um, inside of the subshader, okay? Then what we want to do is we want to put some parentheses around it, and in here we actually give it the name that you see in the inspector inside of Unity, all right? So this is that name that's going to show up in the inspector. And then every property will need two arguments inside of these parentheses here, so I'm going to separate that with a comma. And this one is just going to define the type. Now there's a ton of types and you can go up to the uh, the shader documentation inside of the um, Unity reference manual uh, to find them all. Uh, but in this case what we need is a color type. Oops. So we're going to do color. All right, so that now defines this property right here called color tint. It defines it as a color type. So now it's basically set to a float 4 or RGB and A for alpha. So what we need to do is just set a default color. So we're going to say equals parentheses. And then I'm just going to set a default value of one for every component inside of that color. All right. And you don't need to put a, um, you don't need to put a uh, semicolon at the end of this. All right. But it terminates itself. Okay. Now let's just save this. All right. And let's go back to unity. And we will click on our main mat, and you'll notice now we actually have a color that we can adjust. All right, but it's not changing our shader. That's because we haven't actually hooked it up into the meat of our shader. We haven't actually told the subshader, hey, I want to use this value that's being output from my properties block in my subshader block. Okay. All right. So what I want to do is in, in between the struct um, and the actual surface shader itself, the surface function, if you will, I'm going to declare um, a new variable, all right? And I'm going to say a float 4 because I want a color, because I want each component, I want R, G, B, and A, okay? So it has to be a float 4. And I'm going to use the same name, the same internal name that I declared up here, right? This gets the, the link between the surface shader and the properties block. This basically completes that link between the two, okay? So you just say float for color tint. So it's the same name and put a semicolon at the end, terminate it. And then all you need to do down here is I'm actually going to assign this color, this value that's being put into this color tint right here. I'm going to assign it to the structs color variable, right? 
Okay, so let's do that. Whoops. So what I'm going to do, right? Because I'm going to do that because I don't want to have to change this line of code, not not right now at least. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say in dot color equals color tint. All right. So that actually completes the full linkage, right? So now we're saying in dot color. So we're starting to fill the struct, right? Because the struct is just a uh, collection of data. Okay. So I'm telling color is now equal to this color tint value. So now we have the complete link made between our property, right? So we're actually pulling the value in from our inspector or assigning it to in color and then we're taking in color and we're assigning that to the final albedo value, right? And now albedo is just a, a uh, parameter inside of the surface output here, right? Which has been declared inside of this surface Lambert Okay, and we'll get into where uh, this surface model or this lighting model actually exists inside of Unity, right? Because you can actually see this. But for now, we're going to stay away from that uh, just to keep things simple. So O is containing everything that Lambert will allow us to change, and Albedo is one of them. All right, so let's save that. Let's see if we get any errors or anything. And there you go. You notice now our material is actually taking in the color. So now we're actually tinting the diffuse with this color. All right, and that's all cool, but obviously we want to have a little more control. Um, it's always nice to have a texture on your models. All right, so let's go through that process uh, and that will conclude uh, this video once we finish that. All right, so let's do that. Let's go back into our properties here and we're gonna make another internal variable. I'm going to call this the main text or main texture. You can call it whatever you want, really. I'm going to give it a name. So this is going to be our main texture. And this is going to be of type 2D, right? So in shading um, like HLSL and, and in this case CG, uh, this is going to be of type texture 2D, okay? So in Unity for the properties block, you just have to say 2D, okay? And then you have to assign it a default value, just like we had to do for the color. So in this case, you can just use a string um, called white and give it uh, the open and close brackets. Uh, you can also use gray or black as the defaults. And this will just basically set it up so that there's a default uh, texture available for uh, the shader before you actually assign your own texture. OK, so we actually need to now that we have a texture. This will actually let's just save this so we can go back to Unity. This will actually create us a block in here that we can actually assign a texture to. All right, and we can actually, let's see, I don't have any, well, let's see, there's sources, there's some textures, we can, let's use random vectors in here. That'll look interesting. All right, so it, it actually sets up the tiling for you and the offsets, right? This is the great thing about Unity shaders, um, is you don't actually have to do the math to tile and offset your, your textures. Um, and it gives you a great way to uh, organize all your textures and easily access them uh, without having to sift through many folders and stuff like that. So that's all set up. But now, again, we need to make that link between this texture and the actual subshader. OK, so let's do that. So to, to start that, what we need is we actually need to pass in the UV information from our model. And to do that, we need to do a float too. All right. And the float two just means that we are going to be bringing in two values, the X and the Y values from the UV information, right? So X is the, the horizontal or the U and, the, and the, the Y is the vertical or the V value from the UVs, all right? And I'm going to uh, assign this a name. I'm going to say UV main text, just as a, a nice reference, okay? And then what we need to do is we need to make a connection between the properties block and the actual subshader. So what we're going to do is we're going to say float, or actually we're going to say sampler 2D. Now this is a new term right here. This is just a CG term. All right. This basically means that we are going to sample a texture. Okay. So for now, if you just remember that sampler 2D basically means a texture 2D. So we're bringing in a texture. Okay. And again, I want to call it my main text. So you want to make that link 
right? So this main text is the same name right here. So now that link is made. So then what we can do is we can actually come down to our Albedo here, and we can say that text 2D, let me just make some space here really quick. We're gonna say text 2D, now this is a new function. Basically, text 2D is the way to bring in a texture into a pixel shader, right? In, or inside of a surface shader. Now, this is basically a pixel shader, but it's taking care of a lot of the work for us. Okay? So, text 2D, we want to, it takes two arguments, right? The first argument is going to be the actual uh, texture reference. Okay? So, this guy right here. And then the second argument is going to be the, um, the UV reference, which is this right here. So, we want to pull that out from our, our struct, which is being declared as in. Okay? So let's just take care of the texture first. So we're going to say main text. And then we're going to say in dot uv main, oops, main text. All right. And the last thing that we need to do, because Albedo basically takes a uh, float three, okay, is that we need to do, we need to um, access just the RGB values from this text 2D, because this is actually giving us a float four, okay? It's giving us the alpha value as well. So what we can do is we can say dot RGB. And that will give, that basically um, will allow us to access just the RGB components and leave out the A, the alpha component. All right, and then what we want to do is we want to multiply this by our in color. So all you, all you need to do is put the multiply symbol. So now it's going to take the texture and multiply it by our tint color. And that should work. Let's see if we can break it or not. There we go. So now you can see now we're tinting our texture. It's kind of a cool effect. We're tinting our texture with our color. So we've created a nice relationship between these two just by doing some simple multiplication. All right. And I'm, I hope you can see how setting up the link is, is actually pretty easy between the properties. It's, it's just that you need to get used to the, the different types of syntax between the properties and the subshader. All right. <clears throat> but that's that, and, and you can now add and replace this with any any uh, texture you want. That's not very interesting. You know, you can put any texture you want in there, and you can tile it if you want. Let's put that back in there. You can tile it. You can offset it. You can do everything. So everything is all set up for you. So it's much easier than actually... Um, coding up a full shader yourself. Uh, Unity has provided a great framework for uh, writing these um, really nice pixel shaders using the surface shader model, uh, which is why I, I really enjoy kind of showing off what I've learned um, uh, just from reading the reference uh, material um, in the manual and also doing this in production. And it's just a really quick and fast way. It gives you a lot of power. Um, and I do use the Strumpy Shader Editor um, a lot as well. It's just when you finally get to a final shader that you like, um, it's nice to have the knowledge of making, of writing your own shader. So what you can do is you can translate what you've done with the nodes inside of the Strumpy Shader Editor and you can put it into your own code and optimize it and really get it to um, uh, full performance um, efficiency. All right. So that's the basic process uh, for adding properties and hooking them up into your sh uh, subshader. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, email me at kennyl at creativetd.com, or you can just visit the, the website at www.creativetd.com, um, and uh, let me know what you think, or if you have any questions, and I will be more than happy to answer them. In the next uh, video, we are going to go over uh, normals and how to uh, bring in normal maps, and just how to set up normals so we can start to do some more advanced, advanced effects like uh, adding specular normal maps and Fresnel effects, stuff like that. So I hope to see you in the next video, and I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks so much. Bye.